and decomposition. Productivity, net primary productivity, gross primary productivity, we had discussed about. Gross primary productivity is without loss of energy, the energy that is captured by the producers, that is the plants. All that we have discussed about in the previous classes. Today we discuss about the energy flow. Flow of energy, how is it happening in the ecosystem? So if you look into it, it is unidirectional. In simple words, if I talk about the flow of energy is from the sun. Of this sun radiation that reaches earth, it takes nearly 8 minutes for the solar energy to reach from sun to earth with velocity of light. You should understand that. Of this, photosynthetically active radiations, which are the photosynthetically active radiation, 680 nanometer wavelength, 700 nanometer wavelength, or the red and blue wavelength of light, they are the only photosynthetically active radiations. So 50% of solar radiations are photosynthetically active radiations, which can be utilized by plants. But of this 50%, only 2% is captured by the plants. Just assume if it was able to capture all the 50%, it would have been very productive, isn't it? Energy would have been more, but it is capturing only 2% of the total uh, photosynthetically active radiation. 2 to 10% of photosynthetically active radiation energy is absorbed by plants, which is available for other organisms, living organisms in the ecosystem. So from the uh, solar electromagnetic radiation which reaches earth, only 50% is useful. Of this 50%, 2 to 10% is utilized by plants. Remaining are all non-utilized. They are of no consequence, significance. Okay. What they take of the plants, they are having the energy, they undergo photosynthesis and they will be synthesizing food. Okay. So plants and photosynthetic and chemosynthetic bacteria, they absorb this photosynthetically active radiation and they are going to convert this solar electromagnetic radiation or photosynthetically active radiation into chemical energy by photosynthesis. You know the simple raw materials, carbon dioxide plus water, they are going to form glucose and they will be stored in the form of starch in plants. All this you are aware of. Okay, that is how the energy is stored in plants from the solar electromagnetic radiation. So, now other animals either directly or indirectly they are dependent on this energy. See, we have energy, isn't it? Potential energy and kinetic energy. Energy in motion we call it as kinetic energy. Any system on the planet they have two energies, potential energy, kinetic energy. Energy in motion we call it as kinetic energy, energy in storage we call it as potential energy. So now the plants have captured this energy and they have converted it into food molecules. Okay. Now solar energy captured by plants, they flow to various organisms of the ecosystem at various levels. Okay. So they, they are dependent for food or on producers either directly or indirectly. I tell you what is directly as an herbivore. All organisms need not be 100% herbivore. Like man himself. All of us are not uh, herbivores. Some of us are completely dependent on vegetarian food. Some of us are occasionally or every day they are dependent on the uh, herbivores as a source of food, not plants as a source of food. So, but our digestive system it can adapt to either herbivorous type of food style or the carnivorous type of food style. So, we are omnivores. You should remember our nutrition is omnivores. So, flow of energy is unidirectional in only one direction. The food that is stored in the plants, see the plants are called as producers. Plants are called as producers. In terrestrial ecosystem, how are they? They are the herbaceous plants and woody plants. When you are talking about woody plants, they are trees, large trees we are talking about. In aquatic ecosystem, the producers are algae, phytoplanktons, higher plants, even they have submerged plants, floating plants, aquatic plants. 
Okay. So they are the producers. Producers are the one which captures the solar electromagnetic radiation, convert it into food. Now this food, it is not utilized by the organism itself. This energy doesn't remain in the organism itself. So it would be utilized or if this organism is eaten by other animals, the energy flows to them. Or by the death and decay, that organism is never captured by another organism. By death and decay of this organism, the energy goes to the dead by this food chain, decomposes the whole food. Remember that all that. So need for constant supply of energy is required to counter the disorderliness, loss of energy. See, even though the plants have taken energy, they lose energy. Some of the energy during respiration has heat energy. Some of the energy they have stored, they utilize it for their own metabolic activities. The available energy for the consumers to be consumed, we all call the different terms where they remember the primary prosperity, the available energy for consumers. Okay? That energy can be taken up. They utilize it for themselves or they are taken up by the next trophic level. So next part is the GFC, grass, grazing food chain. So grazing food chain, the example is given as grass, which is a producer. The grasses are heated by an RBO like a goat, which is a primary consumer. This goat is in turn consumed by the man, who is a secondary consumer, not all of them. Okay, non-vegetarians we are talking about. Then the secondary consumer, in turn, they are taken up by the decomposers. The energy from the topmost carnivore when they die and decay, the energy is taken up by the detritus food chain. Detritus food chain is nothing but decomposers. Decomposers are organisms which break down dead remnants, remains of plants and animals into simple molecules and release energy. Okay? So they are called as decomposers. These decomposers can be fungi, bacteria, etc. In case of terrestrial ecosystem, the energy flow is majorly by decomposers. In case of aquatic ecosystem, the energy flow is by what? The major conduit of energy flows is by grazing food chain. But in case of the terrestrial ecosystem, the flow of energy, the conduit, conduit terminate, a passage of energy or a method of flow of energy is by detritus food chain. Grazing food chain is found in case of flow of energy in aquatic ecosystem is by grazing food chain. In case of terrestrial ecosystem, the flow of energy or conduit of energy flow is by the detritus food chain. Okay, you have to remember about that. So food chain and food web, they are interdependent. Now you know the uh, plants are called as producers. The animals which eat these plants or producers, we call it as primary consumers. Consumers we call them as, and in particular, primary consumers. Primary consumers are also called as herbivores. See, producers are autotrophs. They can synthesize their own food. Consumers are heterotrophs. They are dependent on plants directly or indirectly for this source of food. So the uh, primary consumer is a uh, herbivore which feeds on the producer. Directly they are dependent on the producer for source of energy. There are animals which eat primary consumer. What do we call them as? Secondary consumers or primary carnivore. Like in grazing food chain, man is a primary carnivore there. Okay. They are dependent on the herbivores as a food. Energy. There are sometimes the formation of tertiary consumer where the tertiary, the animal which feeds on secondary consumer or primary carnivore, we call it as tertiary consumer. Topmost carnivore they are. And from them energy flows by the detritus food chain. You have to remember about consumers, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer. Primary consumers, some of the examples in terrestrial ecosystem is uh, the insects, birds and mammals. Herbivores we are talking about. In animals it is mollusks. Okay. So remember about that aspect of it. That is what you have to remember regarding the energy flow in an ecosystem. It is unidirectional. It cannot be circulated back to the sun. From the sun the energy flows. 
and as it flows from one order to another, there is loss of energy also. So this is what you have to remember about the energy flow in an ecosystem.